Hi there, welcome to Catholic Family Man, and I am your host, Michael Gennati. Today in the Gospel Reflection for Father's Day, which, happy Father's Day to all the dads out there, no greater honor for us um, than being a dad. But, um, you know, in today's Gospel reading, we have a beautiful example. In fact, it's a great one for us fathers who are always messing up and doing wrong. We want to be better, and it's a great story for everyone. We have in the Mass reading today, just that classic combination of rebuke and justice, as God points out, you know, where we have fallen, shows us our failings, but then reaffirms us through his mercy and love, and then gives us a beautiful example of just what he means. So I'm going to read all three of them today. I think it just bears note because they just go so beautifully together. So we're going to be reading the readings today from the Word Among Us for June 16th. And the first reading comes to us from 2 Samuel 12, chapter 12, verses 7 through 10 and 13. Nathan said to David, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I anointed you king of Israel. I rescued you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your Lord's house and your Lord's wives for you. I gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. And if this were not enough, I could count up for you still more. Why have you spurned the Lord and done evil in his sight? You have cut down Uriah the Hittite with the sword. You took his wife as your own. And him you killed with the sword of the Ammonites. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house. Because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah to be your wife. Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan answered David, The Lord on his part has forgiven your sin. You shall not die. You know, again, God pulls no punches. And through his prophet, Nathan, he calls David out and shows him, Look, what you did is wrong. Sin is sin. You know, there's this phrase nowadays, People take out of scripture, judge not, lest ye be judged, and blah, blah, blah. None of us knows the state of one's heart and soul in the eyes of God. But we are called to call others on because sin is sin. And sin, we're made in this blueprint that God understands how we're made. And when we sin, we don't just hurt others, we hurt ourselves. We damage that which God has created. So God calls it out and through the prophet, he recalls it. But what's he do? David turns around very simple and earnestly, and we know this in David's life if we read scriptures, you know, and around the life of David. He's earnest. If, if nothing else, he's an eternal bungler, but he is earnest in seeking God. And he says, you know, I have sinned. He, he recognizes it. And as soon as he does that, what's the response? You're forgiven. Right? That doesn't mean that there aren't consequences to be paid. He says, the sword shall not leave your house. In fact, we see that. We always pay for our sins. We leave psychological scars behind. Um, we may have hurt others that there's no reparation with. There are all kinds of things that can happen, right? It doesn't just go away, but God takes them back. He's the good father with our children. They do something wrong. We may still have to punish them, but we still love them and bring them back. So that's the first reading. God pulling no punches. Sin is sin, points it out. The next reading comes to us from Galatians, chapter 2, verses 16, 19 through 21. Brothers and sisters, we know that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law. Because by works of the law, no one is justified. For through the law, I died to the law, that I might live for God. I have been crucified with Christ, yet I live. No longer I, but Christ lives in me. Insofar as I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who has loved me and given himself up for me. I do not nullify the grace of God, for if justification comes through the law, then Christ died for nothing. Again, beautiful words because if we think about it, 
You know, yes, God calls us. The law still applies, right? We're still called on. You know, there's also in Scripture, faith without works, you know, is dead. And there's all kinds of things that reaffirm that. But God still calls us on. But, but, He knows we're going to fall. We all have fallen. All of us. But Christ still calls us forward with His mercy and His love to ju He justifies us through our faith and through His love and mercy if we but turn to Him. Think about David. He turned. Right? And boom, God's right there. I forgive you. Now, here is the most beautiful example. And leave it to a woman, because us men, happy Father's Day, but let me tell you what. My wife for me, you know, they say your spouse should be Christ to you, calling you on. That's my wife for me. And, you know, leave it to a woman to show us dunderheads and all of us really what it means. And for the gospel reading, it's from Luke. Chapter 7, verses 36 through 8, 3. A Pharisee invited Jesus to dine with him, and he entered the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. Now there was a sinful woman in the city who had learned that he was at table in the house of the Pharisee. Bringing an alabaster flask of ointment, she stood behind him at his feet, weeping, and began to bathe his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and anointed them with ointment. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him. She is a sinner. Jesus said to him, sorry, I lost my spot there. Jesus said to him in reply, Simon, I have something to say to you. Tell me, teacher, he said, two people were in debt to a certain cre creditor. One owed 500 days of wages, the other owed 50. Since they were unable to repay the debt, he forgave them both. Which of them will love him more? Simon said in reply, the one, I suppose, whose larger debt was forgiven. He said to him, you have judged rightly. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? When I entered your house, you did not give me water for my feet. But she has bathed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss. But she has not ceased kissing my feet since the time I entered. You did not anoint my head with oil. But she anointed my feet with ointment. So I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven because she has shown great love. But the one to whom little is forgiven loves little. He said to her, your sins are forgiven. The others at the table said to themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? But he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Afterwards, he journeyed from one town and village to another, preaching and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. Accompanying him were the twelve and some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out. Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward, Chusa, Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their resources. So there we have a beautiful example of what Christ calls us to. You know, we had earlier David sinning. You know, we all know the story. He saw Uriah's wife out there bathing from his palace. He was, <gasps> oh, sends the husband out, knowing to the front lines, hoping he's going to get killed in battle because he covets his wife. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, right? Ten, one of the basics, Ten Commandments. Yet that's what he does. Uriah is killed, and God says, you killed him. It was, he was killed just as if you'd done it yourself. You used the sword of your enemy to strike him down to take his wife. And he says, because of that, the sword is in your house forever. Not good. But what's David's response? He turns around, acknowledging his sinfulness. In the second reading, we have you know, that calling that it's through our faith 
through recognizing our own sinfulness, turning to God in faith, that we are justified, we are forgiven, we are cleansed, because we can never do it on our own. We will always fall. We all do. Hey, Dad's out there, Father's Day. How many times have we messed up? We're lucky our kids put up with us sometimes. But we all fall. And here we have this beautiful reading. The woman coming in, who she's known as a sinner. Oh my goodness, this you know, black sheep or whatever. The woman with the scarlet letter. Yet she comes, and it, it's really a beautiful sign of how we are to come before God. In our sinfulness, abasing herself. She gets down on her hands and knees. And Jesus says to the scribe, the righteous one, right? The, self, the righteous one who came to dine at his house. Yes, I'm Simon the scribe and I'm having Jesus come over. He says, you know, I came in. You didn't, in those days you wore sandals and with dust and stuff, it was customary to wash the feet, right? Cleanse it because you got to take care of your feet. You get around on your feet. There was no cars or anything. And so he says, you didn't even offer me water to wash my feet. Yet she bathed my feet in her tears. Remorse, tears of, you know, just my Lord, my God, pouring herself out. I mean, what a, what imagery are we presented here? That she pours herself out just begging for God's forgiveness. And he said, you know, and then she's using her hair to wipe it. I mean, there is no, oh, I can't do that because that would be unseemly. Oh, no, we must adhere to decorum. Oh, I, I would do that for God, but, you know, really I might be looked upon silly or people might look on as I'm strange or whatever. No, this woman lowers herself, hands and feet, crying, bathing his tears, wiping his feet clean for him as best as she can with her hair because she has nothing else. She is abasing herself before God because she recognizes, Lord, I am nothing before you. I am nothing. You, Lord of the universe. And there she is just pouring it out. What an image of how we are to come before God asking for forgiveness. She anoints his feet with oil, right? Moisturizing, etc. But she is doing all that she can within her means, recognizing her own state. And what is God's response? Christ turns to her and your sins are forgiven. Because it's earnest. She comes to him out of great humbleness and love. And that's what God calls us to. He calls us to be humble, to recognize our state, coming to Him, coming to our Heavenly Father here on Father's Day, coming to Christ and saying, Lord, I love you. I, I have wronged. Please forgive me. Earnestly asking. And what is God's response? Love and sends her forth in peace. So, you know, God calls out our sin. And we should, if we're, if we're doing things that are wrong and we're not feeling convicted, we need to spend a little bit of time in prayer. And, you know, we need to come before God and we need to do so in humbleness, begging for God's mercy and doing it out of love. Remember, love, the greatest commandment. You shall love the Lord your God with your whole mind, your whole heart, your whole soul, and your whole strength. And the second commandment is similar. Love your neighbor as yourself. Right order. We love God first and foremost. We love others. We show that love in our love of others. Whatsoever you do to the least of my brethren, you do unto me. We love others, our family, Father's Day, our, fam our wives, our children, others, and then finally ourselves. Right order, humility, coming before the Lord in love, asking for God's forgiveness, and thereby we are justified. With that, that's today's gospel reflection. God loves you. Turn to Him. You have a great sacrament in confessional where He looks for you to come before Him. You know, the priest is just there as a sign of God, representative of Christ. Um, some are great, some are sometimes not so great. But you know what? 
The sacrament is there and through them, however, whatever you hear from their lips, you receive God's forgiveness, His love, His telling you your sins are forgiven. Go in peace because He loves you. And if you earnestly seek Him, even if it's embarrassing to tell your sins, God will forgive. With that, this is Michael Giannotti here at Catholic Family Man. Bidding you have a great day. Take care. And as always, God bless and peace.